Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Paper Radiba Wali. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. I believe that content from this channel will bless you and help you to look a bit more like Jesus. On this channel, I talk a lot about relationships, relationship with yourself, relationship with people around you, other human beings, and relationship with God Almighty. It is so important that we learn to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. So, um, yeah, today on this channel, I'm talking about why does God allow suffering. Before we continue, let's just say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to share a word. Father, please teach us, help us apply the things that we learn. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are here even now. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen. So, why does God allow suffering? Hebrews 5 verse 79, that's the main text that we're looking at today. It says that, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. Hallelujah. God is not the author of bad things. Let's start from there. God is a good God. God is amazing. He is God and he's an awesome father. He loves us. However, bad things happen many times. Suffering is part of life. We live in a fallen world and we sometimes make bad choices, right? Choices like watching things. So everyone has a past, right? Before you came to the Lord, there are things that you did that you deeply regret and that you've asked the Lord to forgive you of. At least I hope you have repented, right? So sometimes before we came to the Lord, we were watching pornography or some people were masturbating, right? Maybe some believers even struggle with that and Satan is trying to use that as a stronghold. Hallelujah. Before we came, maybe we were saying words that we should not have said, words that the Bible does not agree with, right? Speaking vain things. Maybe, you know, the Bible talks that we will live and not die. People are saying, oh, you know, talking death and you're constantly talking death. Going against what God's word says. Hallelujah. Now, when you come into the kingdom, Satan tries to use those things to hold on to you, right? Or maybe family patterns and you have not yet known who you were in Christ Jesus. And the enemy tries to hold that or use that as a tool to ensure that you suffer. You know, suffering comes in different forms, right? Sometimes you didn't do anything. But sometimes it's just the devil coming to kill, to steal and to destroy according to John 10.10. 10. Hallelujah. You know, using demonic, family, like I said, family patterns and all that. However, we can be rest assured that God can be trusted to help us. That's the thing. God can be trusted. Jesus suffered. This world is a fallen world. We are not in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve lived before they fell. So there are things we live with human beings, you know. Sometimes I just sit down and think, and there was, I think I was a child, and I thought, ah, if all the human beings, it feels like human beings are the source of the issues, right, that happen in this world. If you look at it at the surfaces, you see, okay, there are wars, people are fighting here, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian war, and all those things, you know, in Congo there's war. And it's between human beings. However, behind the human beings, they are demons perpetrating these things. So it's not just, oh, human beings are fighting one another. Human beings are, you know, not able to live with each other. They are demonic forces. It is not given to man to plan his own path. That's why it's important that you submit to Jesus. Anyway, that's not a topic of discussion. So the discussion is why God allows suffering and how to deal with suffering when they come. So like I said, suffering comes because of many reasons. Sometimes we put ourselves in positions of suffering. Sometimes the devil comes. And in all of this, know that God allows it. Yes, God is still God. Of course, Satan is the God of this world. The Bible says that, 2 Corinthians 4. 4. However, however, God is still in control. God is still in charge, right? God is still God. And if you invite him, he's able to help you. The Bible says Jesus offered pleadings and prayers with a loud cry with tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God, because of his fear. In my own experience, before I say that, Jesus, who is God, suffered, right? He came, of course, he came as a human being. But God allowed him. He was the firstborn. He's the first son of God, right? God allowed him to suffer. So why do you feel like 
you know, we are special when you are, when you are going through difficult things. You are not special, my dear. You are not. Because we all go through difficult situations. Of course, the intensity varies. The situation varies. But it's, it's difficult for everyone when they go through difficult situations. Hallelujah. But the idea is so that we can learn obedience. You see, so he learned obedience from the things he suffered. We learn to submit to God. We learn to pray. The Bible says pray without season. If I say, okay, raise your hand now. How many of you pray without season? I'm sure I will not get a, a very large number. But Jesus says we should pray. And I cannot even lie. There are seasons where I have not been praying. You know, where I have not been praying consistently like, oh, um, every minute, every second or as often as I should be praying. But God says we should pray without, without, without season. Hallelujah. In my own experience of suffering with mental health crisis, I've talked about this many times on this channel. In 2020, stroke 21, I learned to pray because that was the only way I could have peace in my mind. So in that season, I learned the obedience of prayer because that's the only way that there could be peace. If not, I, would, I was just hearing the voices and having intrusive thoughts and seeing the pictures. But the more I prayed, the more those things quieted down, the more I prayed. So when we go through difficult situations, it is seasons for us to learn obedience. Jesus suffered and he didn't really, he didn't do anything. Not that he, he did not do anything. The enemy, God allowed Satan to afflict him literally through men, right? And in that season, like in that my season, like I talked about, I learned the obedience of prayer. And then I learned that those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, those, they looked up to him. Their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed. So when you are going through suffering, because you, all of us will suffer. All of us suffer. That's the true matter. In fact, in, your, in, your, in the book that you came to this earth with, because the, there's a scroll in, in the volume of the books, I've come to do your will as it is written in the volume of the books. So there is a book for you. There's a book titled, for me now, Favor, right? In heaven. And my life is supposed to go according to that book. Now, being on this earth, your life might not necessarily go according to that book because the book is the will of God. But then you have your own, you, you are able to make choices for your own self, right? God has given you a will to make choices. So if you make choices according to what has been written, good. And how can you make those choices? By aligning with God. Now, in that book, there are things there are, there are some difficult situations that God will let you go through, right? So that you can learn obedience. Samson, he had, he was born with a gift of strength. But you saw the way his life ended because there was no, there's no, there was not necessarily no process for him. There was no process for him to learn obedience. He just came up strong and then he was like, okay, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> he was born strong, right? He was born with being in Nazareth. Although he had to follow the, his terms of consecration. But he did not follow his terms of, cons of consecration. And look at where he landed. Look at how he died. Hallelujah. So we must look to the Lord. When we are suffering. When we are afflicted. Whether it is affliction brought on yourself. Whether it is Satan afflicting you. You look to the Lord. You don't go about telling every Tom, Dick and Harry your story. It's good to talk. Oh. And if you are made me, Because me, when I was in trouble. I, that was a way for me to unburden. But God covers us. God is so kind. But it's important that while you are telling, sharing maybe your, to your trusted companions, your friends, you are talking to King Jesus too. And talking to him even more than you're talking to those people. Because he's the only one that is able to help you. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say? James 5.13. So here's what you do when you suffer. Are you suffering any hardship? You should pray. That's what he says. James 5.13. God does not expect us to be so or get mad at him as if he's the author of our sufferings because he's not he's not the one that caused it. No. The person you attack is the devil who is trying to destroy you, who is trying to steal from you, who's trying to kill you and kill every good thing in your life. Hallelujah. You are supposed to cry for help. That's what you do. Is anyone afflicted? Let him pray. Is anyone suffering? Let him pray. Also, you are supposed to read your Bible. I'm very sorry for you if you feel like, oh, the Bible is not God's word. It's just one of those historical books. I'm really, really sorry for you. Because your, the Bible is a, is the word of God is supposed to be our anchor. This life is not balanced, as you already know. You know, and if you don't have an anchor to stand on, you will fall flat on your face. So we must know the Bible. It's not just to read it. Know it. 
and it's not oh my pastor said this my pastor said that read the bible and know the bible for yourself yeah because there are many things that people think is in the bible it's not in the bible the lord wants us to know the bible for ourselves you need to read the bible second timothy 3 16 to 17 says all scripture is inspired by god and is useful to teach us what is true make us realize what is wrong in our lives corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right God is easy to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So the scripture is to correct you. It's to prepare you. Hallelujah. It is to correct you. It is to, to make us realize what is true. It is also to, to help us do what is good, right? It also encourages us. So read the Bible. There are many ways the Lord have spoken to me, has spoken to me just by scriptures. I have a video where I talked about... Um, hearing God and how I heard God and how that was so comforting to me in the middle of chaos in my life. We must also fear God. I would say Jesus heard because he had deep preference for God. That's fear, the fear of God. It's not like, oh, you are scared that God is going to bite you or anything like that or like kidnap you. No, that kind of being afraid. No, it's because it's, it's the fear of God, deep preference for God. The fear of God does not come to us naturally. So we must ask the Lord to teach us how to fear him. It doesn't come, it's not something that hap that's why people do behave anyhow because they don't fear the God and it's not they don't fear God. The God. <laughs> because they don't fear God. And it's not by putting a tattoo on your skin and saying, Yes, I fear God. No, or saying it. It's not a mouth thing. And if we engage him in prayer, Bible study and meditation, we will learn to fear God. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have deep reverence for him. Because God sees us. See, he sees parts of you that you don't even know exist until they show up. And he loves you like that. But of course, he wants you to look like Jesus. We must fear God though. <laughs> God has the ability to take you out of this world and nobody will notice. That's how, that's how strong he is. God is the one that created the earth and hung it on nothing. This earth is spinning right now. It's just not spinning as fast, so fast that you, you notice. Yet we are staying. We can drive. We can do whatever. You are breathing in air. Breathing out air. <laughs> and you don't want to be afraid of God. You don't want to fear God. If God handles you, we need to learn to fear God. We need to cultivate the fear of God in our lives. I want to say a quote from from Kenneth Boa. To fear God is to nurture an attitude of awe and humility before him and to walk in radical dependence upon God in each area of life. The fear of God is similar to the mindset of a subject before a powerful king. It is to be under divine authority as one who will surely give an account. Fearing the Lord Relates to trust, humility, teachability, servanthood, responsiveness, gratitude, and reliance on God. It is the exact opposite of autonomy and arrogance. So you cannot be raising your shoulder for God. <laughs> the thing is that God is so kind. He's so merciful. He's, he's God. And he's such a kind God. And because he's kind, we just think we can take him for granted. We need to learn to fear God. Proverbs 19 verse 23 says the fear of the Lord leads to life and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. So you're probably suffering because you did not have the fear of the Lord and you messed up in an area of your life. We need to cultivate the fear of the Lord. So, yes, you have messed up and Satan has come to your life to attack you and cause you suffering. Or maybe suffering just came your way and you didn't know how or why or God allowed it, right? And it's not because you did anything like Jesus. He didn't do anything. I want to encourage you. Jesus loves you. Jesus is for you and he's with you. Romans 8 verse, 8, 8 verse 18, it says, If you are currently suffering, be comforted with this. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So there's glory coming, hallelujah. There is glory coming. So yes, you might be suffering right now, but God is working something in you. You are learning obedience. 
and if you could just see yourself inside because you know this human body covers a lot of things <laughs> people look normal but they're not really normal some people are beasts yes we are light because we have god in us if you don't have jesus in you i'm not gonna say it too you only you are only, only light when you have jesus but if you don't have jesus then you are not light i'm sorry that's what the bible teaches it's not favor that is saying it you know people are beasts some people are not really light so you just see this human face and then you think, okay, yeah, this one is normal. No. But there is glory coming if you are following Jesus, if you are living for Jesus, and you are suffering. The suffering here is nothing compared to the glory that is coming. God is working something in you. He's making you look more like Jesus. He's aligning you to his will for your life. So it's not the time to give up and be sad and be upset that God has abandoned you. No, he has not abandoned you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. God cannot lie. He said when we are faithless, he's too, he's faithful. He cannot deny himself. God cannot lie. God is good. God is not wicked. And so be comforted that God is a God of comfort. He is the God of comfort. And the Holy Spirit is there with you. So, yeah, there is glory coming. Glory is coming. As you are suffering, just be comforted in the fact that there is glory coming. The glory that is coming is nothing. The glory that will be revealed is nothing compared to what you are suffering now. Nothing. Look at Job. He suffered for about nine, nine months of his life. And the rest of his life was awesome. Hallelujah. Only nine months. And then the rest of his life was, he enjoyed it. Had beautiful daughters. Had more, had double of everything that was lost. So yeah, God has a plan. And just believe him and trust that he's working on everything for you. So that's my message for you today. I believe it has blessed you. If it has, I would really encourage you to like, to share, and also to subscribe. Because it, I'm sure if you do this, it will bless other people as well. You too can recommend it to other people. So yeah, thank you once again for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of the week and rest of the day. Bye!